a woman who sees poetry as her greatest life purpose. When it comes to poetry, Bria transcends race, gender, titles, and even age as she shares her life stories, which are often piercing, intimate, comical, and candid. She has been the featured poet at many open mics and poetry showcases in Baltimore, New Jersey, Virginia, and DC. She is currently working on her first highly anticipated poetry CD entitled The Year of Liberation, set to drop this summer. She is also a member of Come On Sons, a four-woman poetry collective that has hit seven cities along the East Coast, starring Rebecca Dupas, Shelly Says So, and Love the Poet. Woo, let's give it up for Bria! Thank you. How are you all? Good. Can, how are y'all? Y'all good? Are we alive? We okay? Okay, cool. Um, so I do poetry. I've been doing this for like five years now. And I'm a poet that likes a lot of energy. So like, you don't have to snap. You can clap your hands. You can go, yes. I mean, anything you want to do, you can do that. Cool? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so the first poem was entitled uh, Representative. And I wrote this poem um, because we all have like a good face that we put on and people ask like, how are you? And you know everything is real bad. She's like, I'm good, I'm good. And you know you're lying. So that's what representative is. I am known for being a calm, collected, and well put together woman. I am poised and polished purposefully. People seem to really love my smile, so I try to smile often. On the outside looking in, I guess I look pretty good. Like everything is just peachy key, but honestly, I am not always happy. I am not always so polished and well put together. There are days when I'm about to unravel, days where I'm a complete mess. Sometimes it's hard getting out of bed. Sometimes I feel like I don't have enough strength to face the world again. Sometimes I don't want to be around other human beings. Sometimes Bree just really don't want to be bothered. Like stay in my bed all day and not touch my phone. Watch the missed calls and text messages accumulate with no urge to respond. Keeping the pretty mask on when you're actually in need of an ugly cry is a hard job, but I practically mastered it. I can go on autopilot real quick, send in my representative. She knows exactly what to say and exactly what to do not to draw attention to my bad moods and potential breakdowns. You will only see me drop to my knees if I allow you. I don't let many people in and I don't let them in often. I don't want to overwhelm others with my fears and failures and regrets and confusion. I like to give a people some reason, a reason to worry about me. Look, I never want to feel like nobody's burden or nuisance. I put red lipstick on, smiled, and took the cutest selfie on the saddest days of my life. You will only see me drop to my knees if I allow you. On the days where there's no time to cry, no time to scream, no time to quit, no time to grieve, I send in this refined woman that isn't me. I phony smile and fake laugh for as long as I have to. Carefully think out my response to the dreaded question, how are you, and pray my answer is sufficient enough to escape of what's wrong. I like to handle my problems on my own. My thoughts have taken me to some of the darkest places. My feelings and emotions too much to bear. But there is no stunt double to call in when life starts jabbing me in the ribs, so I take the hits. Some blows have left me shattered like broken glass, but I didn't allow the world to see. I bandaged my wounds and covered all bruises. I healed in secret because being vulnerable out in the open doesn't always feel so safe. The smile I always seem to flash is the product of a well-calculated equation comprised of a formula that I've been working on for more than half of my life. It is my representative's best feature, but unfortunately, it is my biggest lie. Thank you. So, can we get sassy for a minute? Yeah. It's, a lot of, it's all about the women, right? Let's get sassy. Um, so, this poem is called, Are You a Man? <laughs> and, <laughs> you know what this is about. Um, I wrote this, this is my first good poem I ever wrote. So, this is like near and dear to my heart. It's called, Are You a Man? With my five inch heels and the, with the, t oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I got excited. Pay me no mind. <laughs> chills that click with the tap of my tippy toes and my lip gloss freshly applied. I swing and sway my small hips your way. I'm on a mission. I come right up to you neither scared nor shy. I don't need you to pursue me because I'm woman enough to know that you're not going to because my presence has you shook. And as we partake in the feast, yeah. <laughs> and as we 
partake in the feast of conversation, I notice your eyes running from my eyes to my breast. And instantly you have disgusted me because my eyes are my favorite part of me, but instead of looking at my beautiful brown eyes, you chosen to look at something a little bigger, staring as if you're trying to guess my bra size. Unbeknownst to you, I was on a mission tonight to find someone special. I just wanted one guy to keep his eyes up instead of letting them drift away, but you failed that test. If you can't keep your eyes up now in times of trouble, where would you guide them? When burden is heavy on your back, do your eyes instantly fall to the ground? Do you hang your head low and walk with feeble footsteps after you defeat? Are you a man? See, you tell me what I want to hear or what you think I want to hear, but what you have failed to realize is I've heard all your poems before. You keep boasting and bragging about all the things you can do for me and all the things you can show me, but you haven't shown me a thing yet. And I know your mother raised you just a little bit better than this. How naive of you to think you would get my number before my name. You're just like the others. Yes! <laughs> You're just like the others. I didn't want to say, but you fell so quickly into the category I couldn't save you from the world you drowned in. You just don't have a clue. You get to ask me the important things like what I want to do in my life, what are my goals or dreams, can I really sing or when did I first start writing poetry? And say you sing to me the silly song of money ain't a thing, just throw it in the bag when truth be told. All I want to do is bag you up and ship you back to the lame ass place you came from. I look at you. My little toy soldier and I smile at each and every one of your war tactics. You still <laughs> think like a boy and act like a boy and fight like a boy. However, I need a man. What I need is an intellectual who's realized that it's not all about the physical. And when the physical finally comes that he mustn't up and run scared to commit to these sacred lines and curves. I need a man who wants to do great things and not just achieve but over exceed what the world expects of him. Even after slavery has whipped his back. Education removed his name from the attendance sheet and Wall Street dubbed his tie and profit that he still wakes up knowing he's meant to be a somebody. I need a man that can read bedtime stories to children in the future, not just whisper sweet nothings in my ear. I need a man who is strong so when I am weak, he may build me back up. But he must acknowledge my strength too and realize that even when he thought he was carrying me, I was carrying him too. So I'm saying though, are you a man or are you a boy? Even though you disappointed me tonight, I looked past your superficial, saw glimmers of your manhood, and I smiled. One day you shall be great. One day you shall be everything I ever wanted, but tonight my mission wasn't completed. So I take my five-inch heels that click with the tap in my tippy toes, gloss lips, small hips, and walk away. Where are you going, beautiful, you ask me. I'm walking away into your future. I shall see you on the other side someday. And thank you for the compliment, sweetheart. You're kind of handsome yourself, in a little boy kind of way. Thank you.